Hello everyone. For those of you who have been watching my YouTube channel for a long time, you may remember when I used to review these classic toy remote control planes that I had in my collection, including, and not limited to, the Air Hogs Mini Storm Launcher. I've always liked the look of these things. It is a very unconventional craft and it was very shocking back in the day and how this thing would fly with its ingenious design. As it is a ground effect vehicle, as this area here is the uh, airfoil, believe it or not, underneath the pontoons and right by the motors, and it's a lifting surface, so it can take off and fly around. And it was a very cool novelty back in the day. Always had a blast, at least with these. I did have the full-size storm launcher back in 2008, and I ended up wrecking it. After three days of owning it, I wasn't really that good of a pilot to fly it back then. Nowadays, I probably will be able to do it just fine if I ever get one. But anyway, let's go back to the Mini here. I've always had a blast with these ever since I was 12, 13 years old when they first came out. And now, about 14, 15 years later, they have been sadly discontinued long ago. Can't really find parts for these. As you see, there's a propeller missing. The body is heavily deformed because it was damaged when I moved to this new location. So I can't really have much fun with this anymore. But I do have a video of when I restored this back in 2016 by replacing the, um, the permanently installed battery with an actual connector. That I can use swappable rechargeable 1S batteries and I was able to get it to run again. See, it does stay up in the air, but not for long. Always likes to go to the left and there's no real, real, real way For to a long time, this design has pretty much been long gone and I was hopefully um, having it come back someday. And thankfully, right around 2020, 2021, that was a long wait, I finally got this. This is a generic Chinese toy called the FX Air 815 Super. Um, as you can see, that the design of the plane looks extremely similar to the original Mini Storm Launcher and is pretty much modeled as such. It's, it's got puller props instead of the pushers that the original did. That's a slight design tweak along with these newly upgraded motors. They're still brushed motors, but they're uh, more modernized with a coreless setup. And there's a gyro in it, so it's much more stable in the air to fly. Uh, these weren't the original props. Um, the one that I did the initial review of this way back in the day when it first came out, right around 2021, it had three bladed props, and those things were brittle. After a couple hard bangs, they ended up breaking. So I just got some two bladed ones. Uh, this was a blast. And I do like how this one can run on water, unlike the original Mini Storm Launcher, because it's more watertight in here. Got the battery hatch up here, and the motors are up here. And unlike the wiring being underneath the original Mini Storm Launcher, like on this, which would short out pretty easily. And of course, the full-size Storm Launcher is watertight, and you were able to run it on water. But... A lot of people really wanted to get something like the original that could take off water and have a fully functional third channel elevator. And this thing, unfortunately, didn't meet those criteria. I remember seeing a few videos online that the only critique that a lot of people had was the missing elevator and in its incapability of taking off from the water. But finally, so we got another answer to that. This is the new Air Hog Storm Launcher. Sort of. Let's take a look. Okay, folks, let's check this thing out. This is the modern day equivalent to the old Air Hog Storm Launcher, the closest thing to it. You see, it's quite downsized compared to the original. It's actually slightly smaller than the, uh, FX815 Mini Storm Launcher copy. 
It is called the DRC Z62 Sky Guardian Galaxy Ship Amphibious Airplane. It's got like a huge long name. Just look it up online and Amazon. It's actually called just the DRC Z62. Um, Banggood also has this same model online. It's called the KFRC KF615. It's got the similar decals on it, minus the DRC branding on it. And uh, that's about it. But just look at this. See a slightly more um, tweaked up design. It's got the similar motors as the 815 in the back. It's got the three bladed props. And most importantly, it's got the elevator with a fully functional servo. So, yep, definitely this is the closest thing I'll probably get to a storm watcher if you want to get a more modern day equivalent without spending hundreds on an old one and upgrading the old one to make it more reliable. So, it's got the same EPP material as the uh, Mini Storm Launcher and 815 duplicate. So it's super durable. So I don't have to worry about breaking much of anything, except for probably the propellers or the uh, servo and the servo linkage, which is actually a little ball link, which uh, will probably be more durable compared to a normal control horn. Um, it's got little skids on the bottom instead of wheels, just like how the original Storm Launcher had skids. And this has the capability to take off from water and you can drive it on snow. So this is officially the three in one that we always been looking for, like the original Storm Launcher did. I just like how the design is very unconventional and I always like to see it back again. All right, let's take a look at the contents. You get a screwdriver, which you will definitely need for the, for the radio and the battery hatch. It's got a screw there. You gotta unscrew it to get to the battery bay. You got spare propellers. You see brake one. And then this other baggie here has your spare battery and your other battery. These are 1S 800 milliamp 3.7 volt lipos and a charger, which is your typical USB charger you plug into your charging brick for your phone and it lights up red to let you know it's charging and then once it's fully charged it's full. It takes a really long time to charge it with this charger. I recommend using an actual hobby grade charger if you have one but it's good enough for a kid I guess. And most importantly you got the transmitter and it's got full three channel capability. See that's how you bind it if the plane was on it'll probably be running but it's not it's not plugged in. Um, as you can see, it's got an on and off switch. This is your elevator trim right here in the middle, um, which is very cool. So if the elevator is going too far up or too far down on its own, you just trim it up and down, like as so with this. So left is up and right is down. And then this button here is your differential steering trim. So if your motors are going one way, you can trim it to go the other way a little bit more. And of course, this is your pitch up and down, you pull back for up, and then forward for down, and then left and right for your differential steering. This here is your uh, high rate and low rate setting. When you click it one time, it's low rate, and the second time it's high rate, it goes beep beep. You'll see it in the video when I fly it. And it's got a dummy button on the left, which in the manual shows is a light switch, but there's no lights on this unit, so it's kind of useless. I did have the instructions manual for this model, but apparently I lost it. I was having fun with this and I ended up misplacing it. It's just a typical instruction manual that shows you what to do. It's got poorly translated English and then a Chinese section as well. So that's pretty much it. It's, it's straightforward um, to figure this thing out, especially with a new flyer. So I'll show you how to get to a battery. So you just you get, you get the included screwdriver and unscrew this little screw a little bit and you pop this open then there's the GST connector you pop the battery in there it's a little tight so you're gonna have to crunch the wire in as soon as you put the battery in and then when the battery is in just 
screw this back on. And then there's a power button, not a switch. This button is right next to the uh, servo here and the uh, battery bay. You push this down for a couple seconds and the light inside the cockpit will turn red and it'll be blinking until it binds with the radio, which will turn the radio on after you turn on the plane and it'll bind. And when the red light becomes solid on both the aircraft and the radio, it's fully binded. But enough waffle. Let's see what it looks like when we're, when we're about to fly it. And we're also going to take some footage of the uh, 815, an updated video of this thing with two bladed propellers. It wasn't these propellers I had on originally. Uh, they were actually the original mini storm launcher propellers, reversed. And it actually worked pretty well with those. So let's see what happened. All right, we're here at the park, and for this is the Air 815 Super I reviewed a couple of years back. As you may have noticed, compared to the original review, I have swapped the props out because the three-bladed props that came with it, I broke them all, and there's no way to get spares. So I took the props from the actual original mini storm launcher and put them on here backwards because originally there were pusher props on that airframe, so I just flipped the pr props around so they became pullers. And it seems to work pretty well. So here we go. Yeah, the props are definitely a performance upgrade. I notice when you give it too much left turn, it will do a sweeping dive into the ground. So I gotta be very careful doing left turns. But the original three bladed props, it just flew rock solid. <laughs> Nothing wants to stay up in the air. No, there it goes, see a little sweeping dive there? You give it too much left. <laughs> Yeah, behaves just like the original Mini. See if we can do a good landing on it. Hmm, close enough. <laughs> okay. Testing out the DRC Z62 Sky Guardian Galaxy ship. You can see it has a fully functional elevator just like the OG Storm Launcher did. And it's got differential steering propellers. And as you notice, they're raised up so you can fly off water. So it's got low rate and high rates. That's one beat for low rate. You use this button here. And then the second press makes it high rate. So you have more responsiveness on the elevator and the steering on the thrust controls. So, here we go. A little bit of driving on the ground here. This thing does have a gyro in it, so it's more stable in the air than the old school storm launchers of the old days. But it does have its minor issues with the elevator on high rates. It will try to turn upside down on you if you go too hard. 
Well, look at that. Flies pretty good. It's, that's high throttle right there. The faster you go, the more unstable it gets. It's a lot more easier to steer and fly in a high alpha, almost like a stall. You almost hover it like a helicopter. When you give it a full down elevator, it just it just scoots. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Not very good on sand, but it's good on asphalt, water, and any other soft level surface. <laughs> All right, we're here at the lake. So we're about to do that now. A nice little calm period. And there it goes. Oh yeah, it's a boat, all right. Even this choppy lake water. I don't want to go too fast so it don't take off if it does fly. Just like the original Storm Launcher, it has an elevator to allow you to regulate its altitude in the air. Even this chop, it's, it still runs pretty good in this water. Wish its steering was a little bit better with a rudder underneath. But that could be uh, adjusted with the high rate and low rate setting. That's low rate and that's high rate. You can go back to low rate just to cruise around on the water. Now, the big question is, will it take off? 
There it goes. <laughs> Just like the OG storm launch. This is their roll. <laughs> All right, let's bring it back down to the water. It is twitchy in the air on high rates. That's why you couldn't see the takeoff properly. Oh <laughs> well, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the spiritual successor to the storm launcher. Mm -hmm. The water hitting the props when it hits a wave. We got a big wave coming. high rates. Some low level flight. Here it is, the DRC Galaxy Ship, or Storm Launcher 2.0.